you know, we typically use because um, that's actually why we connected because Valero is having a hard time finding title companies that could close some of their products. So I want you to just kind of touch on that for us. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, kind of what Jamie mentioned, um, you know, we specialize in pretty much the creative financing. Of course, we do traditional FHA, conventional, um, you know, we, we do those, of course. Um, but we, I mean, we really have a large multitude of products that will not only, you know, help us kind of help more no's turn into yeses, as in rejected buyers turn into pre-approved buyers, but it also helps a real estate agent to know that they have that arsenal of loan products and be, be able to go out there and prospect and turn, you know, and, and basically expand your pipeline. So that is something that we're very passionate about here. I do have a presentation. Let me go ahead and share screen. I'm trying to still sign in with my phone. One second. So I can at least have a, a webcam that's working. Okay, here we go. Log in. Okay. Why do I got to share screen? Here we go. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yes, yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Okay. So let's get into a little bit about, we have a different, I mean, we've got like over 20 banks that, you know, we um, bank with. So a little bit about us. We do not work for any retail lender. We are mortgage brokers. Um, so whenever you work with a broker, you tend to have more diversity of options and programs that you can offer to your clientele without having to get into some of the kind of crazier creative financing that we had just heard about from Jamie and her team. This is still what we call traditional programs with unique and non-traditional ways of qualifying them. So we'll get started into this. So overview of what exactly we consider creative financing is using non-traditional mortgages to qualify with traditional programs. <coughs> So we're looking at qualifying the clients through different alternative mode, uh, alternative documentation of income in order to qualify people who did not qualify with pay stubs, did not qualify with their tax returns, if they're self-employed, right? <coughs> We've got different programs. And this slide is going to touch on our top three, but then I'll get into a little bit of, you know, some of our investor programs, different things. So one of our big programs that we have here is our I-10 program. We've got three programs that we offer for I-10. The first one is going to be our I-10 3.5% down. This is certainly our most popular. And this program is fantastic because most I-10 lenders are requiring starting a down payment of 10% versus this one is a 3.5% down payment. So this definitely opens up the doors to a lot of I-10 or ITIN um, client, clients that you may have had that do not necessarily have the funds, you would look at this program for them. Now, because of the popularity of this program, it is it does have uh, it is very strict on some of the guidelines and very loose on some of the others. So, one thing that they're very strict on is they must be able to prove that they have been renting their housing for the last twelve months, and that is accepted in the form of bank statements, which is the preferred method, canceled checks, or a rent ledger. So those are the three um, documentation types that we request when trying to qualify a client for this program. The big thing here is they do use bank statement income, which means that if your client, if you have a client that did not qualify based on reporting income tax, uh, the income tax earnings low um, with self-employed people, Raul and I find all the time that when it comes to doing their tax returns, they put a lot of expenses to not owe a lot to the IRS. So this is one of the loopholes that we have as a lender to ensure that the client is qualifying with their true income and not what they've put on their tax returns. So you can see that here. We're using their bank statement income, a.k.a. deposits, on a monthly basis, and we will average those out over a, a amount of time um, that the lender allows us. But it's a huge game changer on this one because we're able to not have to use tax returns and use bank statements. So... And, you know, number one, you already have low down payment there. 
And then you're, you know, using alternative method of qualifying, not the tax returns. They also do allow one year of self-employment. So if you have a client who has been self-employed for only a year, they do to qualify for this program. Um, so anybody who has recently switched from W-2 to 1099, this is the type of program you would want to look at for them. Um, it is a 40-year FHA term. So this is a true FHA loan. There is an FHA case number assigned. So, um, you know, that that is... Um, Another aspect to it. So when picking the property, you know, we have to be able to assure that it's FHA approved, aka will pass an FHA appraisal as well. So that is one thing to keep in consideration, but it is for a 40 year term as well. So one thing I found is just prepping the client for that versus a 30 year term helps a lot, but it also helps with their mortgage payment. So the interest rate on this one is a little bit higher um, considering that they take ITIN and alternative form of uh, alternative income. So you're looking at about the eight or nines for these programs. They're usually about a point ahead of where the regular market is. Does anyone have any questions on that program? I just want to say that's a super great program because I haven't seen any down payment that low like ever. Yeah, for ITIN, it's it's pretty sweet, mm -hmm. honestly, and it's it's the only yeah. one in the market like that. So, and obviously we pitch this to ITIN because they are the people that take most advantage of this program. But um, realistically, this could be for anybody, again, who has one year of self-employment, low down, you know, needs to do a bank statement loan, anything like that. This is the program for them. This is a quick question. This is Randy. So uh, uh, this ITIN program is for an individual, right? Correct. This is not any investor products. This is for somebody oh, who's purchasing a primary home. Okay. I was about to ask for that for investors, but that's okay. We have something for investors here shortly. We're just kind of going over primary. Um, then we've got an I-10 10% down program. Okay. And this one is no rental verification of employment needed. Any income type approved. They, knew need, they do need to have at least two years of self-employment. This one is a conventional 30 year fix. So we are following traditional guidelines. However, the whole point of this is to help you approve more borrowers that have been denied. Um, but yes, um, these programs are for primary residents as well at this time, but we'll get to investors here in a second. And then we have our I-10 20% down. That is an option. The rates for these are high eights, low nine. So for your clients that you know want a low payment and want to qualify for maybe you know, a four or $500,000 home, which in Texas, you know that's a lot. Um, you know, but want a low payment, this is the program you would look at for them. No verification of rent, also accept profit and loss income. This one do, does need two years of employment. So this is also a very sweet program. However, you know, we're providing avenues for different types of clients, right? That may not have the 20% down. The rate's a little bit higher with this one and so will the payment, but you have three different channels to provide to any ITIN borrowers that you have. Now we're moving to our general self-employed. So now we're shifting from ITIN to the U.S. citizen or, you know, resident, anybody who has a permission to be in the United States. We have a profit and loss program. It only requires 3.5% down. So um, this, is, this is also only for primary residents, but it is only 3.5% down. You need two years of self-employment, but this means they do not require any tax returns. And it is a true FHA 30-year fixed program. You can be DACA or resident allowed. I don't know why this did this. I apologize. But so, um, but this program is a game changer as well because most lenders are going to ask you for about 10% to begin with on a bank statement loan or even a profit and loss. This one doesn't even care truly about the bank statements. The only thing that you need is a profit and loss to qualify that client. And rates in this one um, right now are in the low sevens. Um, Raul, I don't know if you want to comment on this program, but I just had somebody at a 7.3. Um, I know they're offering down to 6.5, so very competitive on the rate as well. The profit and loss is also self-prepared profit and loss. You don't have to have a CPA prepared for you, so it's very loose on the guidelines. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's um, definitely the self-employed 
Uh, this is definitely something you would like to, you know, you want to have in your toolkit there. If you have a client who's truly making, you know, a lot more income than what they've reported on their tax returns and have a good social, you know, that this is the program for them. It, it literally is 3.5% down. So we will get a lot of rescue files from lenders who, you know, suddenly the underwriter wants changes and wants 20% down. The client's not prepped for that and they were already prepped for 10%. Well, then they're ready to go for this program. It only requires that 3.5% down. Um, you do have closing costs on top of that. So you do want to prep the client for that. Um, but this is for primary residents, self-prepared. I mean, it's a very, um, we close lots of these, you know, it's, it's definitely a good arsenal to have for you guys. Questions on this program, anybody? Okay. So now we have low income earners. I don't know why it's doing this. I'm sorry. I don't know why the, this white text is overlapping the black one, but so we have VOE only program. So client makes primarily tips, cash, commission, and has a low base salary, or maybe you have um, a bartender who's making, you know, four or five dollars an hour. But realistically, after tips, they work at one of the you know best bars in the city, right? And they're making eight to nine thousand dollars a month. Well, this is the type of program that you would want to refer for this client. We don't ask for pay stubs. We don't ask for W twos. The only thing we ask for is a verification of employment to qualify that client. So again, using, you know, non-traditional methods to qualify them for traditional. We do have this in a conventional Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac uh, program. And then we have it for FHA as well. It is also 3.5% down minimum if we have to go FHA. If we're going conventional, it's 5% down. So we're still following conventional guidelines when it comes to a lot of these items. However, you know, they're just um, changed up a little bit. Um, they are considered what we call as portfolio loans, since this isn't a true conventional, um, you know, but it's still housed and, and approved by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. So, um, you know, it's just different. It's, it's portfolio because you're using a different method of qualifying with their income. Uh, what is here is 640 plus FICO. This one does have a credit requirement of at least that. Um, even though it's FHA conventional, we, you know, that our, our investor wants a 640 plus FICO when talking to this type of client. Questions? Okay. Um, so now we're going to get, these are the top three programs that we get. Um, running back to Randy's pro, um, question on our programs we have. Um, I did not include this because this is just like our top ones that, you know, I didn't know kind of what kind of feedback we'd get. And I usually just go from there. So we do offer the DSCR products. And what those products is, it's a debt to service coverage ratio program. Raul is more so um, experienced with this one. I primarily handle those three. Raul, would you like to talk about that program? Uh, for the DSCR, yeah, so we have different options on DSCR. So DSCR is a debt coverage service ratio which pretty much means as long as the uh, projected rental uh, income from that property covers the mortgage note, we should be able to do the loan. And we start with uh, five costs as, as low as 620 and down payment as low as 15% down. Um, and it's usually a one-to-one -one, uh, DSCI ratio from the note to the mortgage payment. It's, it's pretty easy loan. Uh, there's no minimum requirement on the amount of rentals that you need. Just uh, the amount of rentals you can hold per bank, but we have a lot of banks, so that shouldn't be a problem. It's up to four units. I believe we have one that does up to eight units um, on properties, and I'm trying to acquire one for, for apartments as well. I'm, I'm working on getting that investor as well, but it's, it's a pretty simple loan. And the rates on that one, it's anywhere from 7.875 to 9.5. Just depends on, on the FICO and down payment. So that program is awesome to get out of any hard money loan scenarios that you may have. As Raul mentioned, you know, you don't need income to qualify. Really, all you, you're looking for is, what would you say the minimum FICO is on that role to get competitive uh, pricing? Uh, 680 plus. So yeah, you want at least a 680 plus. You can close in an LLC as well. They do allow that. Um, and then second, the program, you know, you can do refinances and you could also do cash out refinances, which, which is what a lot of our investor clients prefer. 
in order to be able to take the equity out, maybe sit on the property. If you have plans, well, you know, I want to see how the market's going to pan out in the next year. I don't really want to get rid of the property or, you know, I want to rent it, have that as a, you know, as a recurring asset there. But I definitely want to take my, my, my asset out, my equity and provide it or sorry, invest it into a new property, whatever that may be. We also provide that and they go up to 80% loan to value on this. The great part about this investor loan is that you also can do it with ITIN, foreign national. If you have any clients who, you know, want to buy in the U.S. and <coughs> here, that's what foreign national would apply for. But this is truly the investor loan. Um, Raul, I don't know if you are familiar with any of the like Airbnb loans, any short term loans, anything like that. Uh, yeah, we can do this as well. I uh, usually don't do those, but I have another another partner that's very familiar with those loans. I have a question. Uh huh. How long do they have to have owned the property? I believe uh, it's want, six months. Is want, that correct? No, it's six months for cash out for just to refinance is day one. Okay. So yeah, super amazing program on that one. We've helped out a lot of investors that were in tight spots with their hard money loans. Um, you know, that this is definitely either the long-term goal for you, you plan on sitting on that property, um, or you know, you need to get out of a you know situation that you have with the hard money lender, that's when you would want to look at this one. Um, but that's pretty much all we have for you. Um, as we <coughs> here's our contact information. Raul is the president of this company, he's available. I'm also available, I'm the loan officer under him. So, you know, we, we pride ourselves on this. Any scenario you have, uh, you know, where we take a lot of rescue deals. And I would say maybe half of our business is rescue deals because of all these creative financing options that we have. So, um, you know, we, we're kind of the last step before you start going to some of the deals that we learned about earlier, right? Um, but, you know, that this is a good toolkit to have for you guys in case you need it, maybe in your own investment or you have clients that, you know, are looking for that kind of program. You know, just give us a call, shoot us an email with your scenario. We'll be happy to help you out. Thank you so much, Valeria. Thank you, Raul. Um, and I want to thank Jeremy again. Um, our our team is pretty solid. So uh, we have great underwriters as well at People's Title. So we, of course, use the big one, Fidelity National Title, that closes a lot of transactions for us. We also have WestCore, which is a, uh, they're kind of, uh, what we would say we would pair with more of the creative financing um, options. Uh, they can close a lot more transactions for us when it comes to uh, more difficult deals, anything that is specialized. So they're a really great underwriter for us that we've added. Um, People's Title is an agency, so we can choose, uh, it's similar to like what a broker does, we can choose a, an underwriter according to the type of transaction that we need to close. Um, we pick them, of course, through what they specialize in. And then, um, again, we have bilingual escrow officer and assistant with our company. So we're offering um, more, more solutions to get the closings done for our clientele. So thank you again uh, uh, for letting us do this class. It was really fun. A lot of great information that we're able to share. Thank you all again so much. Um, does anyone have any last minute questions for them? Um, Otherwise, we're going to wrap up today's room. Um, I want to thank you all so much for, for coming today. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their Tuesday. Thank you again to our speakers. Um, and we'll see you all again soon. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Take care.